Okay, welcome back, 0K fans. And Sackdoth is back. We'll be a little bit softer than usual, but he's back. Hello. So we're moving on to the finals. We saw the bronze match. I don't know if you have any comments on that, because you were watching it as well, but not saying anything. Just really good matches. It was interesting that um, Google Frog and Acronym picked a, what is essentially sort of a spider map, and it's one of the few maps where it sort of has metal extractors which are only on cliffs. So sort of spider and jumps are good there. Or yeah. air starts. Yeah, and that was kind of surprising. I mean, we had a spider start and an air start. And it's nice that... I mean, Anakin and Lowry really adapted to that. Because I was expecting Google Frog and Akadim to go for something like spider gunship or cloaky gunship or something like that. Where they do something kind of crazy with the size of the map. But that was surprising they didn't. Yeah. And of course there's a Trojan Hills game, which was an interesting microcosm of the Bandit Plains game. Showing how much difference the size made. Yeah. Alright, well, we're just gonna get this started once Shkazi shows up. Shkazi. Once this gets up, I don't know why Shkazi's not in. Not in the team. Anyway, we are going to be moving on to that as soon as it starts. Yes, I realize it's not really a whole lot going on. I mean, we're at the end. This is the finals of the October tournament. Very interesting upset as well. I really, I, I, I'm ex actually excited about how much of an upset this was because it's sort of it's it's showing new tactics and new players. Mostly, it's showing people picking interesting maps. Yeah. I... I'm conflicted about Delta Siege Dry now. On the one hand, I don't understand why. But on the other hand, those are some pretty awesome games. Yeah, it's nice every now and again to have a game that goes to both players going, we, yeah, yeah, we need nukes. Nukes, is, is, that's the only thing that's going to finish this. Yeah. It's interesting to see a game that's that evenly matched too, because it was all mobile armies. Usually, you you either see a strong pork line forming, and that's what leads to the ma match being fairly even, or you see you know it sort of swinging hard into one person's favour. But the way the bottom would just constantly swing back and forth with these big mobile armies with minimum static defences, just tanks and wolverines just swinging back and forth, it was really fascinating to watch, and yeah. nobody could get an advantage. I'm very glad that wasn't that much in the way of static defenses, because that's something I've found kind of annoying in current 1v1 meta, is how strong static defenses are. Yeah, definitely. But I think a map that large, once oh. you get to a stage with Reapers and stuff, unless you want to commit to Doomsday Machines and Annihilators, you have to basically use mobiles. Yeah, and that's... I think it's because of the way the artillery works in that map. Like, it can work on that map, whereas most 1v1 maps it just won't. You're not going to see artillery all that often. Mm. That's probably what it is. I mean, artillery is meant to counter defenses. I think part of it is this: you're seeing more wolverines, which means in order to clear wolverines, people resort to tremors, and in order to clear tremors, people resort to moles, and you know. And I think that artillery options in tank and vehicle are stronger than in other factories, so you're more likely to choose them. That's a good point. Yeah, because hammers don't really last that long. The shield bot doesn't even do anything. I mean, it's racketeer, disarms, woo. Not particularly mm. useful. And what was the other one? Oh yeah, and then jump bot has. Jump bot doesn't have anything. Jump bot has firewalker, but that's not oh, necessarily yeah, right. something you're gonna pick. Jump bot has a bunch of owl stuff. And... Well, firewalker is really, really strong. It's bad against shields, but it's amazing against like okay, but it is really cloaked units right? and skirmishers, and but it's expensive and, and dies and easily. What else is there? Yeah, I can't really think of anything. Yeah, nothing really comes to mind. But yeah, sniper's you know really strong, as we saw in the last game. It was amazing yeah, how far, are powerful. far back they were and how much they managed to win from there. 
So it looks like we're having Flipsim and Norm going Cloaky in air, while Black Duchy is going for jump one, and Scuzzy's going for Cloaky. I'm guessing Black Duchy's going to go for a big pyro attack right off the bat, probably try to jump in from the north side, take out the base directly. Not sure yeah. it's going to work really well. From the other team. What? You chopped out. Okay, sorry, your connection's getting a bit wonky. I, I something about shenanigans I heard. I hate when Skype does this. Anyway. Yeah, it should be better now? Yes. Yeah. No, it, we're going to see air shenanigans, I think. It's going to be interesting to see how air does, particularly against puppies. I think puppies are a really interesting choice. Yeah, it's a good... We've seen before, puppies do a very good job, so I can see that. And it looks it's, like the pyro is not going to the north, actually. If I was if once I, if I was a black duchy, once I saw the factories, I'd just go, puppies. Puppies are great against glaives, puppies are great against uh, fighters, puppies are great against bombers. I just keep spamming puppies once I saw this. Well, black duchy is mostly spamming puppies. I mean, three to one ratio, but still, that's a lot of puppies. And the pyros yeah, I, are good for dealing with switches. Or for just doing stronger harassment later on, and contains and such. You know, yeah. taking the map and actually keeping hold of it. <laughs> but I suppose the glaives do that too. Oh, it looks like Black Dutch is trying to jump up using the pyro, the puppy fire mechanic. And the way the miss works. It doesn't seem yeah, to be working though. It's hard to do. Oh, it doesn't matter because that puppy went and got itself killed by killing off a glaive. I'd use a puppy contain right now, just get the marginal advantage, killing off the glaives, killing off the fighters, while um, allowing uh, Skarzy to take territory, which is what he's doing right now. Yeah, we, we just see in the semifinals that Skarzy is, is the stronger player. Skarzy is more confident in getting some of the more riskier propositions, going for expansion a bit faster, going for higher tier units a bit faster, or not higher tier, but higher cost units a bit faster. Is generally a bit more confident about how to handle every stage of the game. We just, see Norm's, Norm's flying around the side, uh, across the puddles, to see if he can bomb out the, some of the factories and probably trying to go for the wind. Mm hmm. Which will actually work pretty well. There's no def there's no defenders whatsoever. There's a razor it, being built up by Black Dutchie, but that's not going to be in time. Black he Dutchie needs to use it though. All messed up. He's he's been spotted. Oh, he's pulling back now. That was bad. I don't know what he was doing there. He should have gone in. Yeah, that was unfortunate. Skazi is doing a wonderful job just keeping scouts around everywhere. Yeah, interesting. Norm's getting a uh, Jethro, a, a, a gremlin, gremlin in the base right now. Yeah. So he's doing a yeah. good job of getting, getting the scout in as well. It's probably that is spotted definitely there. good to see. He's probably going to get spotted there, but um, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. That is a wonderful position. Like that... Mm. There's nothing that's going to likely get it. They're, the only thing that might get it is this Conjurer. Yeah. But otherwise, that is in such a perfect perfect place. Sees everything. Oh, just gets revealed. Just gets revealed. Runs a bit too close to a wind generator. Did not need to do that. Did spot he, for the Napalm, but not well enough. Yeah, it was not very good. He, he could have gone around the side, come up with a cliff from the back, avoided a lot of the Razor, razor's Kiss fire, uh, bombed out all the... the wind generators on the top and then mm -hmm. gone gone back down the cliff before he died but uh, yeah instead it, that was not really worth it and especially no, that wasn't... so late the earlier you do an economic attack like that the more impact it has yeah that was not what was needed to be done that was not the coordination needed sadly Skazi is definitely Skazi and Black Touch are definitely handling the air very well right now well yeah they're doing the right thing they are expanding a fair amount they are Comstat. doing the contains Oh yeah, wow, flipped up overexpanding, overextending quite a lot, and this is a perfect comp snipe. But uh, oh, I mean, oh yeah, Air is doing a comp snipe as well. Yep. That too, so it's a mutual comp snipe here. Flips up losing their commander immediately afterwards. Takes out most of the glaives, however, but the rest of the glaives, are they going to manage? Is that defender that's the problem, but looks like, yes, they are going to manage. They get rid of the metal extractors, punish the overextension, but so did Skazi lose their commander. Mm, we have two commanders down now. Yeah, but Black Touchy, so at this point, Black Touchy is the furthest ahead economically. Yeah, I think Black, Black Touchy needs to push his commander out, because you can see that Norm's already pushing his commander, taking territory, 
Oh, Black Dutch, he hasn't taken any. So, yeah. unless Black Dutch, Norm's in a position now to take the low ground um, and secure that, or to push into the middle, try and secure the Comrack, while um, Black Dutch, really needs to get down, take the low ground, and push the. So, uh, get his own Comrack. Mm. Or get Scarzi's at least. Yeah, it looks like. Looks like at this point, there's really not much that can be done to try to snipe Norm's commander, because that'd be the other option. We just snipe Norm's commander, try to take that out, and that no, way, there's no way to do it. I can see why he doesn't want to move out, because there's the, oh, this constant threat of air, so he wants to keep his commander in his base, near the uh, Razor's Kiss, and then focus on using units in the field. I can't believe that. Although I would yeah. say more builders, so just spread that out. Like, use this conjure over in the north. Use the conjure over in the center. Well, you are, but... Keep using it. Use the conjure over to the southeast, why not? Or to the northwest. I just spread mm. it around. Bombers can't hit everywhere at once. They are ahead right now, which is uh, good for them, but uh, yeah, I don't know how much longer that's going to last. Well, not with... Against an air start, you need to expand. Yeah, that's... And they were, but now they're getting really timid about it. Although they are reclaiming, but that's not enough. They are going to expand, but... Yeah, building a couple defenders is all. You kind of want to build a couple defenders and expand. And razors are being built around the map, so that at least yes. is good. Yes, is get, getting back on top of his production and he's paying more attention to his constructors now. That should um, help a lot. If he doesn't get bombed, no, he lost his constructor in the north. That was were claiming the commander. He only got eleven percent of it, which is not really enough. Yeah, it's a constructor. I mean, it's one to five. I would say probably one to four ratio to glaze would probably be a better option in this case, rather than one to five ratio. See a big army of glazer Otherwise puppies, which is a very strong force going down in the south. Because I mean, that's it, it's mostly invulnerable to uh, to mm -hmm. fighters, and it's, also, it's very measure. strong against enemy gla enemy glaives. Yeah, and a tick up here for in case the commander comes along. I guess. Hmm. Actually, the calm could be sniped here. Norm's commander is in a really vulnerable position. But uh, as the spectators are pointing out, it will it can just jump into the water. Oh yeah, that's true. It's the advantage of the jump commander. For all that it has less hit points. It can jump into water. So on maps like this, it's great. Big army of ravens coming around the north. Probably sniping and the Archangel's metal electric out of position. Or? No, the Archangel's totally out of position. If it were over to the north, this would be totally different. I mean, the Gremlin's doing a fine job, but the Archangel is just not there. It's exactly what's needed. There's not enough uh, gremlins there. They're actually getting sniped out individually. He does lose, use, lose one raven, but I think it's totally worth it. Yeah. For that, for three metal extractors... No, two metal extractors, I mean. No question. Well, I think for two metal extractors and um, three gremlins, yeah. Oh, it's yeah, right. The gremlins are knocked down, too. Whittling and down the gremlin pants. Ar Ar Arkansas goes down as well! That was a huge blow. Yeah, it was too far forward. Um, Skazi and Blackjack are starting to make some real missteps here. And they're, they are running a tightrope. They're still at the stage of the game where they do not have a confident position that they can work from. They're making a good push here along where the com commander wreck is, which is just in time to c catch out three conjurers which have not suffic got sufficient defense, but there's a tick. And the tick goes off. Uh, fortunately, not it only well catches enough. three glaives. That, was actually, yeah. that, that, I think, makes up for the loss of the Archangel. Yeah, if they can secure this area in particular, they need to secure the low ground. They still need to secure their commander wreck. Mm -hmm. Where, yeah, that was, um, I mean, you can see how quickly um, they secured Flipstrip's commander wreck. Where, although now it's getting contended to puppies, which is a really good idea. You should always do that mm -hmm. with your claim, which is in enemy territory, if you possibly can. Oh, and an attack coming with the pyro is trying to get rid of nothing because it wasn't enough. Oh, one wind generator with generators. There. But yeah, the idea was more just to hit everything. That pyro is going to go down. Man, if that pyro was supported by the puppies, it'd be a totally different story once again. The, the puppies are just regenerate, generating tons more puppies. Oh, they got bombed. That was nice. That was very nice. Killing the puppies with... Yeah, um, the puppies. With the napalm bombers. Yeah, that's really hard for the puppies. They, they need Although, to be... Um, they need to have like an attack order on the plane to make sure they're facing it when it comes over so they can really snipe it down. Hmm. Because that also means they're in the air. When the bombs drop, the puppies are in the air. So even if they miss or overkill, they don't get killed. They, they don't get killed. They don't take damage. Yeah. And side is coming We're, in. Are they going to go for this expansion over here to the west? I don't know. 
But it looks like Flipstep and Norm are just getting enough power in. They're getting enough in here that is going to have issues with trying to get ahead. I mean, they're falling behind. Slowly but surely, they're falling behind. They're making these small missteps and not dealing with the real power that's there of the air. And occasionally they do kill air units. Occasionally they take out a fair chunk of the forces of Flipstep and Norm, but it never seems to be enough. Or the right Flipstep spot. managed to take, take the left side unmolested and built up pretty significant defenses there with the uh, the Newton and the, the Lotus. Yeah, that's what the, I mean. The, new if you had gotten in there earlier, it's just one, one constructor who built all of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Newton alone on this map is really strong. Mm. Especially if you start blocking out the ramp with terraforming, it becomes almost mm. impossible to charge up it. Yeah. I think that... Um, it's a shame that in the middle of the map, um, Skazi also went in with a Zeus against a Zeus and a warrior and didn't ah. manage to kill either of them. So he really needs to build up. He really needs to build up a proper army before he goes in like that. It's just they're finally taking their low ground and reclaiming their commando, which is just it's a little bit too late when um, Norm has a heavily entrenched um, low ground and he's building a second factory on the low ground, the spider factory. Yeah. Well, the thing they is. Are, so the thing is, when you're in this position, I mean, it's, it is the position where you're starting to get it really concerned because on the one hand, you want to make sure you have your army, but on the other hand, you want to make sure your opponent isn't able to expand and molest it because you want to be able to harass that out. And you're feeling like, I've got to deal with their stuff, but I can't deal with their stuff, but i got to deal with their stuff. And you're not really sure yeah. what to do. It's a very on the left tough hand position. Side, there was a scythe that went in and only managed to kill two uh, wind generators, though, because the, between the Lotus and the Newton, they managed, they managed to, take, to take the scythe down. Uh-huh. And the, um, uh, really unfortunate, they lo he lost uh, the Archangel again to uh, bombers. Bombers, actually. There's just too many bombers. There are. At this point, it needs to be Swift to counter it. And speaking yeah. of which, Airplane Switch is coming up for Skazi. Mm. But I'm not sure there's enough time. Yeah. The Zeus's are it, presenting a major problem. It's a matter of attrition at this point. There's just too many bombers. It, it needs to sort of take them out a few at a time. But they're attacking in, 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 with impunity in areas where there's just not enough air to kill any one of them. Mm -hmm. They could have invested heavily into AA, but the truth is they'd probably have lost the ground war if they'd done that. Yeah, and already the ground war is pretty weak. Yeah. I think probably just gone... If they gone for an air switch about five minutes earlier... Yeah. I think if they um, managed to contest this uh, right side, where mm -hmm. um, Norm currently has his commander, but it's already at level two, so they really need some sort of dedicated weapon to snipe it, either snipers, a big rocket force, a bunch of Zeus coming in, a, a tick trap or something like that maybe, but uh, it has a beam laser, uh, high power servos and personal shield and a radar module, so it's not that beefy and it is a jump commander so it can be easy, at least sort of scared off. Hard hmm. to kill but easily scared off so they can retake that territory, but he's already secured it with two lo lotuses so he's going to be incredibly difficult to dislodge. Yeah, and once again going for the left side, contesting that with puppies. The problem with puppies, of course, is they can't capture. They're just one of the big problems with them is that, yeah, is that he's using very cleverly using uh, defended nanolathes to waste the shots of the puppies because the puppies will attack a nanolathe, which is at one or zero zero point one percent, which costs no metal but will destroy the puppy. Mm -hmm. So that's very clever, and also using defenders in general, using defender now on the high ground, it'd be very difficult to get puppies in there from now on. I gotta say, I'm really not sure what this tick over here in the southeast was for. I think it was built up to try to stop the commander from going around the back, but that was, wasn't going to happen. It was jump comp. Why would it? I think it was sent in with the uh, with the previous um, glaive force, just as a general thing. Oh, here oh, we go. Now it's being used. That's now it's being nice. done out the air pad. That, that's that's not a bad usage. I'm not actually sure if that. No, it doesn't stop the rearming. Uh, it wasn't even enough to stun the air pad because the air pad has too much health. Just a few of the planes. <laughs> it knocks one of the bombers off. Yep. I think it finished refueling and just decided to, to to try and take off, but it's like, okay, disengage, gauge clamps. Clonk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where are my engines? Alright. It's lucky you didn't just blow up on an impact of the ground. Yeah, it needs to fall a little bit further than that. That does happen. If you EMP a plane in midair, it will fall towards the ground and blow up. Really? If it, hits, it... if it hits the ground for hard enough, it will, yes. Okay, because I thought uh, when planes got EMP'd, they just... Oh, no, it's it's slow. Slow has the weird physics-defying effect of causing the plane to just move through the air slowly, despite the fact that that should still cause them to drop. 
Yeah, well, I mean, you know, maybe they, they have enough thrust to, to, to lift ratio that they can go at the slower speed and it's all right. But uh, the real problem is that um, it, is that um, when they get EMP, they drop kind of slowly and they tend to sort of drop enough to actually drag alone because gravity is not very strong on planes mm -hmm. in this game. Uh, that uh, what you can do though is you get a Newton and pull them down and you smack them against the ground and they take damage from that. Ah, but wait, is so the game actually does simulate drag, lift, thrust, and gravity er, and gravity? Yeah, I'm not sure how well it does all of those things. It has all sorts of things like it, it simulates your aerolon and your your your, your angle for the, the your wing angle and all sorts of stuff, which is oh. yeah, yep. I didn't realize that. Just because the way sure slow much. work didn't seem to fit in with the very robust simulation. Unless slow is meant to be, this particular unit is in this odd bubble of slow time. There is so little, um, they have su such good lift and there is so little gravity that slowing them just a little bit is not going to cause them to drop out of the air. Even oh, going so that's, that's actually what it is, is that it's simulated and their lift is just that great. Yep. Oh, okay, so it's not, it's nothing to do with a weird time travel effect, they're just, or no. time slow effect. They just have very aerodynamic wings. Huh. But we can see a flip step sort of crowding out the middle of the map now. And Norm has solidly taken the right side. And again, they've managed to clear out the low ground for Skazi. So, yeah, it, they're very economical behind. But uh, Black Dodge is saying he's going to try something radical, a Firewalker. That's not even in the queue. Oh, no, it is. Never mind. It just got in the queue. Yep. It'll be a minute before it's done. This could be very effective, but I think it's just going to get bombed. Yeah, I really don't see anything that'll benefit it. I mean, the problem... The problem is the Archangels haven't been able to survive. There is an Archangel in a position to try to stop bombers from coming in, but... We've mentioned before, there are a lot of bombers. There are half a dozen bombers. I just think the Archangel should be able to take care of at least two of them, but yeah, that's only two. He needs more Swifts, I think. How many Swifts are there so far? Oh, here we go. On the right-hand side, Norm, with his commander, has now built a missile silo. That's game. Yep. As if it weren't already. And Inferno's coming. Why is it always, in it's always Inferno's? It's never Aeos's. I mean, I realize kind of why, because it's good for getting rid of a lot of units for a long period of time. The Inferno will... It's really good against buildings, actually, because buildings can't run away. Oh, yeah, so that's it's also true. Amazing against w these big stacks of wind generators. It's good against metal extractors and forgets, prevents them being built for the duration. It's good against um, nano towers. It does just enough damage to kill them. Same with um, uh, constructors, so any constructors in the area. It prevents the factory from building. So, in this situation, it's perfect. If well, you want to start. It's good for anything, although Aeos is being built. Actually, it's Inferno and Aeos. Yeah, Aeos is good. It is fine uh, against really heavy targets. It is good at sniping commanders and static mechs. Say, if you've got a, a um, uh, Strider which is being repaired, and you know where it is, you can snipe it with the Aeos. Uh, it's good against fusions. Oh, I see. It's 3500. So it's much, much, much stronger, but 150 yeah. damage is all you need for a lot of stuff. Exactly, yeah. The, um, uh, the, the Inferno is more than enough, especially for a lot of light units and buildings. We see very effective use of moderators in the middle of the map, cleaning out the army, but it might not really be enough. Yeah, they're just, they have a lot to just grind through in order to get through this whole thing. Yeah, a lot of static it's defenses. It's not feel battle, especially with the Aos and the Inferno being fired off, both into the main base. Takes so the, the Firewalker doesn't even get up off the ground, and the main base goes down, combination of the two. If it weren't for the repair, that factory would be down as well. It's probably going to go down. Oh, no. The, the no, it's being repaired. It continues to yeah, be repaired. The commander is able to repair it, yeah. An EOS and a... um, And a... Uh, here we go. Bombers. This will be interesting. Oh, yeah. Bombers taking out the commander. Which, nice which shot. Doesn't, doesn't but, really take out the missile silo, but... Yeah, it's probably a little bit too late. But, but um, that cause is burning. There wasn't another Firewalker. Oh, there is. Oh, never mind. One Firewalker actually managed to get built first. I was wrong. It did too, that yeah. That'll, uh, that'll, that will be actually really good against the um, missile silo. No, cause well, it, it won't matter too much, but yeah. Well, no, it, it will, it, it'll prevent the um, missiles from burning. construction, burn. yes. Yeah, the missiles actually burn to death in the fire. It's really good. But yeah, an EOS and uh, Inferno are actually enough between the two of them, if, they, if you don't repair the factory, to take it a factory as well. So that's really strong. It's one yeah. use for EOSs. It's, it's not really very cost-effective, because EOSs are... 
they're 600 metal and a factory is 500. But no, sometimes the factory is... 600. Uh, 600, yeah, okay. I but it's the same enough, cost. But yeah, yes. so it's, you, but you know, you're projecting power into a high value target, so... And it's not can, just the factory. Yeah. If there's any support structures, caretakers, any of that stuff, it just gets wiped out as well. Yeah, it's a very low area on the EOS. It doesn't have a big uh, area of effect. You need stuff which is just immediately nearby. Oh. It's the um, it's the Inferno which is going to take out the support structures. You know. Right. But still worth doing. But I mean, that does up the price to significantly more than the factory. So sometimes uh, players will just opt for the Inferno just to shut the factory down for a while. Here we go. This is really good use of the Firewalker here. I mean, even though this game is probably mostly over, we can see some very interesting tactics here because the Firewalker is so rarely used. We see a sharpshooter which is burning to death in this fireball, being completely revealed. Mm -hmm. This is why the Firewalker is really strong against the Cloak Factory. Any cloaked units or cloaked units in general, any cloaked units walk to the Firewall get revealed. Because they get damaged and they get revealed for several seconds because they're still burning. Mm -hmm. Whereas. Uh, the problem, of course, though, is this sharpshooter is going to find the Firewalker, and the Firewalker is going to die. <laughs> There's a good chance of that, yes. It just... It, oh, wow, does that... They don't have vision of the Firewalker. That's the problem. Mm. Actually, check their vision. They don't have it. And it looks like they're going to make an educated guess about the sharpshooter, and they're going to hit! It's a close one, but... Oh, no, just barely miss! Right at the edge, it missed, and the AO still gets up. But here we see some, Inferno gets up. We see some units which are just on the edge of the fireball. Oh, there we go. Good. One yeah, of the other things that makes, gone down. One of the other things that makes the firewalker really strong against the factory is that it's it's large number of light units which tend to have small hit, number of hit points. Mm -hmm. But I want to give up. Yeah, that is game. So we're on to game two of this is the finals, by the way. So this is the best of three. It's best. It's first of three. It's best of five, not best of three. So. Phillips Tip and Norm need to win two more times, not just one more time in order to win. And Skazi and Black Duchy have two chances. Well, have... Well, not two chances, but... They... Yeah, actually, at least two more games they have before they will outright lose if they continue along with this. But they're probably going to be fine. They're probably just going to pick a counter pick that works for them. And that will be what we'll get to once we get to it. I'm not sure what the counter pick is going to be. Because they have to choose. I think it's... Knowing Skazi and Black Duchy, it probably will be the C map again. Probably in Kulta. Wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> okay, so. I should advertise the final stream here. So, any, any comments on that game besides what we were mentioning before? Yeah, I think that um, it's showing a dominance of airplay. This is just what I expect in 2 vs. 2 to, for air to, to be standard on a lot of maps, especially a map with which is large or has a lot of cliffs. I can imagine 8x8, which is mostly hills and things, or which is mostly flat. A map like Red Comet wouldn't necessarily work, require air start, but I think on any cliffy or large map, um, I think we should expect air. Yeah, that I've noticed that even on, like, even Ice Coffee played in its own or Ravage played in its own, I've noticed the same effect. Like, mm. air starts, gunship starts, and 1v1 even work out pretty well. Yeah. I think we're seeing more of that in 1 vs. 1, and maybe that'll be. I, I, I just. The thing is, I keep expecting it in 2 vs. 2, and then we keep having tournaments won by people who don't use it at all. So, maybe I'm wrong, but it, it, is, it is what I expect. I think that's what won it. I think the air, them str scrambling to deal with it, them bleeding AA units which just kept dying one after another, mm -hmm. them not being able to, they're being too, losing their commander and then not feeling confident to push out with anything more. I and think that, that's what won it. Yeah, that is the thing, is that confidence. Like, being confident, not just the when to push out, but when to hold in. And that you're not going to necessarily be completely torn to shreds, <laughs> even if you don't... Okay, we read comment. But even if you don't get in the best position. If you're allowing your opponents to get a bit of stuff going on, you can at least with more forces manage to get into a good position. If you know where they are, you can go around the map, be tactical about it. If you have no units, you can't be, even be tactical. Mm. Just throwing them away. Mm. But that's really hard to learn. <laughs> really, really hard to learn. Mm. Definitely. Okay. We're on Red Comet. Surprisingly, the first red comet game of the entire tournament that I've 
casted because there might have been a red comic game in the game that Scotty and Black actually played against against Dancer and and I had to look it up. Ransa? Rudolph? Exponent. Exponent. Not one of the more well known reindeer names, I'm afraid. <laughs> I think that um It was struck from the list. I think that uh, Red Comet sometimes is a bit of a niche pick precisely because it's nobody's specialist map. Everyone should, who knows how to play 1 versus 1, um, should know how to play Red Comet. So maybe it's something that, that a, a 1 versus 1 player or a set of 1 versus 1 players would pick over a set of team players possibly. But uh, other than that, it's not, not like in Cult of where, where or Comet Catcher where it takes a specific skill set. Yeah, well, Neck is a high macro skill set. Whereas this is a mid macro skill set. And I mean, Skazi Black Duchy. Skazi, I'm pretty sure I've played, seen play 1v1. Black Duchy, on the other hand, not as much. But I don't know if they're really thinking of that. They might be thinking just, okay, let's go to a neutral map, something that we don't have to think too hard about specific strategies, just play. Just We'll see if we can just outplay them in fundamental skills. Yeah. And that's a risky proposition, but I think that Skazi and Black Duchy, Skazi in particular probably has enough they can work from. Like, Norm, good player, but Norm has only really started to get up in the game. Has really started to get their LO up higher than, like, 1600s, though, in the last month or two. Mm. So they're a good player, but they don't have a huge amount of historical experience. So the problem, and they might be thinking, oh, well, they just don't know how to, uh, might not know how to handle as many situations. That might be what they're thinking. It's just... Let's go to the basics. Let's go to the fundamental map or a fundamentals map. Not worry about anything special or anything that favors a particular factory other than your standard flat map factories. And then we have hovercraft for Norm and flipsteps going for light vehicles. Black Duchy going for heavy tanks and Skazi has not chosen yet. I don't see it all. No. Oh no, Skazi's going for light vehicles. Yeah, I think we can, it's interesting, we're seeing like, oh, Hovercraft meta hype, it's sort of like, it we're was. <laughs> not seeing that so much anymore, and we're seeing Norm for the first time, I think we've seen this tournament, um, pick Hovercraft on a flat map. Yeah, actually. Anyway, well, that's what we see. So we have Hovercraft, Hovercraft is going for daggers, three daggers into Builder, we have two Kodachis, two Kodachis into a Panther, wow, Black Dish is being very aggressive. Flipstep going for two darts, three scorches into Mason, which is also fairly aggressive. And Skazi, same level of aggression as Flipstep. So very quick start, very action-oriented. I think that uh, this really comes down to how well Norm can get his dagger ball running and how well he can use it and preserve it. Because I, I think in the long term, obviously, tanks have the advantage there. Mm -hmm. And if they can whittle them down, whittle down the uh, dagger counts with Kadachis, because he is opposite the hover player, so he'll primarily be engaging them. And here we see some daggers coming towards the Kadachi right now. Well, that's probably a good hint of how it's going to go. I mean, the Kadachis do have the burn and the splash. And that's one dagger down, two possibly, if the other one gets damaged enough. Well, it's definitely one down. The second one looks like it'll probably survive. Maybe. Yeah, it'll survive. Close though, and then mm, losing I mean, yeah. losing a unit for free like that though it doesn't look it does not look good for a hover player to lose a, no. a unit for free that early, especially now that they've just lost a Mex as well. Flips have just lost a Mex for free. Scars able to get away with that. Yeah, they have no radar either of them. Yeah, whereas Black Touchy and no no they do. Flips has radar and Black Touchy oh. has radar. Excuse me, Flips has more for radar. Yeah, he has a right cannon radar module. Yeah. Which is nice to see. I like people using the radar module. I have noticed it become a lot more popular in recent times. It's something that I think... I mean, after E-Cell was dropped, there was a lot of confusion on what to do. And I think some players just went for radar module. I mean, radar was already semi-popular for level 2. Mm. But yeah, I think a lot of people either went for single weapon, auto regen, sometimes, I guess, radar, and there was another one as well. I think It's a place? cheap thing to... F it's a cheap thing to throw in your first slot because radar is something you're going to want anyway. Mm -hmm. It's mobile, so it, it's, it's slightly, it has slightly less range than the static radar, but it's mobile, and generally if you're pushing your commander out, it's, you're going to have better vision and better coverage with your radar, 
And you're also going to have advanced warm yeah. warning of snipes or anything like that. Although, okay, so the south we have Kodachi and Dagger. The Dagger's taking out Kodachi's. They've lost a couple daggers in the process. North, not really nothing happening, but one Kodachi goes down for the cost of four daggers. Not the best trade. Not worth it all, I don't think. You, he's switching straight into Mace because he's really not comfortable uh, with building up a Dagger Ball because he's lost so many. Yeah, so, nice. yeah, he, he's, he's given up on, on that. Let's hope he can move to do something with Mace or he might be in trouble. And that's... That makes sense. Going to Mace, that's perfectly sensible. When you consider that I mean, Black Duchy clearly either has the type advantage or just the micro advantage. Either way, Norm is not in a position where they can comfortably micro their way out of whatever box they throw themselves into. Getting yeah, Warriors, getting yeah. Raiders, sorry, Warriors, Warriors is typically what I tend to do, but getting Riots to deal with Raiders. Black, Black Duchy has a, has a Panther Kadachi tag team in the middle, which is just tearing apart Raiders and Scorchers everywhere. Mm -hmm. The Mace will hopefully help. The Panther is still a bit of a threat, though. Actually, quite a bit of a threat. I mean, Scorchers are hard countered by Panthers, pretty much, right? Like, they're pretty decently destroyed. That was a recent thing, I believe, like a few months ago. Uh, It's always been the sort of direction we've been going that if we want tank revival, because Scorchers are so good against everything in tank, because they're like an anti-heavy unit, they're a raider unit, they're one of the few raiders who can take a welder on and beat it, you know, beat it really bad, badly. Yeah. They're also relatively good against defenses. So all the things that tank do, you know, Scorcher beats. So Panthers are definitely, yes, the unit you build if you want to beat Scorchers. Right. I mean, in, obviously it's been sort of a meta thing that Panthers are the unit you want to build. Period. Yeah, a, a, a part of that is well, scorches last so long often on these flat maps that yeah, you want to keep building panthers. I think it does come up, like You're playing tanks. You yeah. want to build panthers. Yeah, I think I think that's fair. It's not not the ideal state, but it's fair. The mace is making good work. It's doing a lot of free damage, but it's not giving him the swing he really needs. But it has allowed him to expand to the south, uh, unimpinged. Well, it's just they're skipping raider phase. Like, Norm is skipping Raider Phase completely. We're going Scalpel Mace. And it looks like Flipstep is continuing along with Raider. If you can't preserve a Dagger Ball, you have to skip to Raider Phases as Hoppers. Because you you need to just keep that attrition alive. Here we go. Mace oh, is against Commanders. Nice. That Mace is just going to kill it. And yep, down it goes. Skazi's Commander goes down. However, the Maces get. One of the Maces sacks itself to do so. Two of the Maces. Both Maces die in order to kill that Commander. At this stage of the game, I think that's actually worth it. That's a quarter of the economy Shkazi had. I think that's almost an even trade, uh, depending depending on the follow-up here. Because I think Norm can easily start pushing out because there's very little... Yeah, you know, It depends what, what happens with those Panthers. If those Panthers can be used to punish Norm now for not having any maces, and you can see that a dart is already being used to... to Penetrating, might mm -hmm. be able to take out a metal extractor. But if he can punish him now, he's expanding along the south with a welder. And yeah, those Panthers are in position now. And not only that, oh nice, they're timing in just for when the, the scalpels are actually shooting. The scalpels actually nearly hitting themselves, thanks to a miss. But the, the Panthers are going to be able to do that, no problem. And the thing is, what also matters is this commander is actually in no man's land. It's right in the center. So it could be theoretically reclaimed by Flipstep. Bit of a stretch, but it could be in theory. It's what he's going for. You can see, yeah. I don't know why he's building metal extractors. He really needs to be building a lot of laser towers there. A ton of laser towers and defenders. And then he can use that both to reclaim to claim those three metal extractors and to get the commander. Yeah, that is that is a thing to do. Whereas in Black Dutchie's case, man, they can just probably push in with these Panthers right now. Especially mm -hmm. right in the center. There's a nice hole in the center they can take. There's one Lotus, that's it. But he's, he's, he's lining up to t take on that commander there. I think he's going to try and snipe it. Take on, yeah, the northern commander. Take on Flipsip's commander. Because that Flipsip's commander, yeah, getting flanked on both sides. Scorched in the north, Panther in the south. Flipsip's commander has about five seconds to live. At best. Four, five. Oh, wow, it's actually not doing too badly. <laughs> they took out everything. It lasted else, a whole ten brother. seconds. Just, yeah. Wow, I was wrong. That real, real overextension there. I think he felt that um, maybe the pressure from Nor's, Norm's um, scalpels 
and maces in the south would keep him back, but those are riot units, they can't apply that much pressure, they're too slow, the panthers can react, go in, take out the commanders, really good coordination with the, the scorchers on the other side, mm -hmm. although frankly it wasn't needed, because Black Duchy is really balling his panthers right now, and the same way that you want to do that with daggers, is really making them just adding more and more, losing very few. And that's really hard to deal with, I and mean, it's like, it's one of the things, well the thing with panthers is that they do anti-ball, because, you know, they explode and they tick out. Mm. But at the same time, that's not easy to do unless you actually have enough to actually kill them with. Sniping another commander, sniping the recon commander. Oh wow, that's... Is he going to jump out? I don't he's think... Stunned. No, he's stunned. No, that's not happening. Yep, he's perma stunned. He's not going to get out. That is yeah, two that's... commanders for free. Holy crap. Panthers are... Panthers, he's now got like uh, 2.7k worth of Panthers, so it's... That's like... That'd be like... You know. It's 3k now. Yeah. I, I, that's, you know, like... 25 um, scorches or something. That's a huge force, and mm -hmm. they're they're all partially damaged. And you can sell that's the sign of a good tank player when all your units are partially damaged because he's actually building a caretaker on the front now, line now and moving welders up so he can have a base to re repair his panthers from so he doesn't lose any. Yeah, the anti balling. Flips are finally skipping out of raider phase, going finally into consolidation. Well, not consolidation so much, but going finally into the riot skirmisher side combat. A little late though, Yeah. unfortunately. Levelers might be able to get a kill if they're lucky. Nope, not lucky. Oh no, they do get a kill. They do get lucky. Yeah, he needs more than that. Um, <laughs> you can't, you know, it's way less, he had way less in value there. Each each panther is more expensive than a leveler. So if you, you know, if you go one leveler for every single panther, and you can make cost there, but if you have three levelers worth it, yeah. versus ten, you, you're not going to do anything. No, but it looks like they are getting... There are enough that are kind of damaged that if properly focused, they should be able to start causing some chains on EMP. Yeah, you need... Currently, with the way the EMP is set up, you need a lot of Panthers before they start to dangerously chain with each other. It's sort of like... um, It's 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 something that, you know, you need to watch, but you need to watch it generally against, say, other things with EMP, because the EMP damage will sort of add up over time. Mm. So if you're using them against ticks, or you're using them against um, Zeus, or you're using them against other panthers, you could use a set scalpel to... Uh, no, <laughs> didn't hit. Not quite. Didn't even hit on the drop. Although it takes down another panther, and I think... Yeah, excuse me, because you do need a lot of dead panthers in order for that to work. Although, yeah, even with all the dead panthers that are happening, it's not enough. That's just two or three panthers dead for the entire army. We do see an air switch coming in from Norm, but I don't know how well that's going to even work. It'll be of some yeah. use, but I think they'll just drop. Maybe EMP down this guy. See, you can see he's almost there. He's almost being able to actually... Oh, you can see panthers in mass are actually not bad against air either. <laughs> yeah, I figured that, the, figured that would happen. Yeah, yeah that's a problem. Yeah, it does appear that we are going to have... That it looks like Flipstep and Norm are really fighting an uphill battle here. Economically, they're actually fairly on par, but it's the fact that the military is down and their build power isn't that flexible or that protected. Just took out another shadow. The shadows are just... <laughs> they're, no. they're just... All the way to go. I think you almost want to use um, Phoenixes instead so they can, you know, stay in the air and not dive, or turn the dive off on the shadows, because diving down into, into a pack of panthers just means you get shot in the face. Oh yeah, right, because that's actually a behavior thing. Yeah. Right here. Dive. Nice little halibut attack in the south. Took out a few metal extractors. It's very nicely done. But, uh, yeah, he really needs to deal with this panther pool. I'm not sure <laughs> what they have to deal with it. I mean, they he's have... He's trying to use... Sorry. He's trying to use air and dominatrixes. But, um... <laughs> you need a lot of dominatrixes for that to work. Roaches would yeah, be wonderful now. I don't see that working. Yeah, Flipster has built a shield bot factory nano frame. And it's going to be five minutes before he finishes it at current build rate. But uh, if he focuses on that, he might be able to get roaches out and deal with this. Because he is managing to hold even on sort of the portion of the map he's holding. Oh, and it looks like we do see... There are Phoenixes coming in, and the Scalpels are starting to get some good shots in. The the Panthers aren't being repaired as much as they probably need to be. That is a problem. 
Yeah, the economy is actually uh, mostly even right now, and in some ways a little bit of favour of the the team on the uh, on the left because they are getting a little more claim right now. Mm -hmm. They just need to deal with this army. Yeah, they managed to pull that out. Well, let's see. The tank player hasn't really switched over. I mean, Black Tuchy hasn't switched over to Reapers that heavy heavily, but they have switched over to Reapers partially. They have the chainsaws as well, which is a pain. And even if they lose the Panthers, that's going to be a problem. If they lose them all at once. But I don't see that happening. And the Dominatrix uh, is now dead. For free. Here we go. He switched, has switched to Phoenix, which is a good yeah. choice. But they don't really do enough damage. Uh, the second Phoenix bomb, and actually, well, yeah, they don't do enough damage. Because this is the thing. They all need to be kind of evenly damaged, and then the EMP can chain. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Yeah. This is what's happening now. You can see yeah, all actually. this. Um, but there's not quite enough scalpels. He just needs a little bit more. And if he can do that, he'll get the whole pack chaining. And he'll manage to, you know, wipe it all out. But he just mm -hmm. needs a little more power than this. Which doesn't look likely to happen again. I don't know if they have enough... No, not even enough build power to come in. There's not enough metal coming in for Norm. Just That's the problem. There just isn't enough resources. And Norm's using a lot of it on one-shot, if that. Zero or one-shot Phoenixes. Yeah, this chainsaw is really making it really, really difficult to get bombers. You can see how much area it's denying. This mm -hmm. has this huge range, and that whole area, you just can't use bombers in it. Not at the levels he's using them, because he's just using them and losing them one at a time. You can go into Phoenix, uh, into the range of a chainsaw if you have a big bomber force, but he hasn't. he's done the same thing. He's failed to do that, the same thing that he failed to do with the daggers, which is build up a big force and take zero attrition. He just keeps losing them when he dives onto the panther pack. Yeah. And that's... You see that every time, too. Where, like, there's no mace ball or scalpel ball, and there needs to be that as well. It's not that perfect yeah. of a type counter. He just sent in two maces and two scalpels, just piecemeal again. Yeah, And at this stage, that's... there are all these welders which are repairing the panther pack between shots. No, there's a roach down. Ooh. It's Ooh. A ro oh, nice roach shot! Takes out three of them, but no follow-up, unfortunately. That was poor timing. That was it, the perfect counter, though. That did, you it know... It was. That was, like, three times cost or more right there. I think that, you know, that's... Do that four more almost, times and you're solid. Almost six times cost. Although the north is actually five or six times cost. Yeah. I, I, I'm not sure about the choice of dominatrices. They're good against um, Ravages. Definitely good against Skazi's Ravages, but I don't think they're very strong against um, Panthers. Not in these kind of numbers. Yeah, the Reapers they'd be good against. The Panther pack is slowly getting whittled down. I'm not sure that because matters, of all the riots that are being fielded, but uh, at this stage he's already transitioned to Reapers. There's three. That's more than enough. Yeah. And Reaper, Rav Reaper Ravager. They form a similar role, but you know, between the two of them. We have a mace along the bottom. Trying to do. Oh wow, it's actually got a. Well, it's not a great position. It's basically a sacrifice thing, but if it's coordinated nicely, I mean, if it could coordinate properly, it would be able to at least distract enough, take out these Reapers separately from the Panthers. I don't see that happening. He doesn't have anything powerful enough to take out the Reapers. Yeah, it's one half of a plan. <laughs> it's one half of a wonderful plan. I almost feel like the rally points are set for the enemy base. The way he's pouring these units in one at a time. It's really, really smart to use Roaches at this point against those Panthers. Even against Ravages, they're quite good. Roaches are very good against Ravages. But it's too late because the Reapers are already up. Yeah. Something for next game, I suppose, if it comes up. It's a good call. It's a very good call. It's just the fact switch was too late. And now... Oh, man, that roach did not get a chance to go off. Panthers also can be perfectly accurate, so a roach running at them is not nearly that effective. We see the yeah. is trying to get some value in, trying to um, skirmish these uh, these uh, ravages. Ravagers doing an okay job of it. Mm. Ravagers don't really counter each other, though, although. And that was just roach. Spam it. Flipsip's just pumping out roaches. Trying to get it's a good something call. with roaches. Yeah, if they can take out the Panthers, at least that gets them open to take out the Ravage, the Reapers, I mean. And possibly dominate the Reapers. Seems like that would be the best use for the Dominatrix. Ah, but the Roaches go down for nothing. Like, yeah, you can't, run into a, 
you can't run into a pack of panthers like that. You need to uh, burrow them or get behind an obstacle, a wreck, a small hill, anything like that will do. So you you need to take advantage of, of terrain and um and the field, you and uh, go them into attacking you. You can't just uh, run into a pack and expect anything to happen. Yeah, that's well. If you look here, we do have uh, some roaches buried. Actually, some roaches are behind here, but that's not. Are there going to be no? They're running to wolverine mines, but not roaches. Everything's going to the north, and once again, trying to pull the roach north. That's. I don't know if maybe Flipstep is trying to do it in between timings, like try to time it so that the panther has just fired. I don't see that working. Yeah, as we can see, it just does not work. Just immediate death. Doesn't matter. Now we see there is an air switch coming out from Skazi that came out a little while ago. He's losing the roaches to Wolverine mines now, which is really bad. Yeah, it looks like. Desperation attempt, Wyvern coming out, it'll be a minute and a half before it's up, but Wyvern coming out from Norm. Desperation attempt to probably get rid of the Reapers. It's a good choice in this situation, but um, he has to remember the enemy has air and he's building Swifts now. Mm -hmm. Although the Dominatrix is actually doing a pretty good job. Even though it just wasted against a Wolverine mine. <laughs> but you know, apart from that. Oh, a Roach. It scared the Reapers. Here it comes. Oh, pop too early. Yeah. And once again, they're just continuing to take uh, just whittle down Flipstep and Norse forces. And the Roaches well, aren't even in position design. this time. I mean, the Roaches were in position that had been before. It's like if Flipstep was just... Like, this thing is, really requires patience, because there was position there. The Roach is in there, right at the choke point in the west side center. Like, Black Touchy's forces went in there just long enough for a roach to blow them all up. And that didn't happen. And that Wyvern is 30 seconds away from being done. It'll be able to deal with, um, basically everything that's being fielded, but it's too late now. Yeah, there might... Yeah, it's gonna be Surrender first. And the roaches are being used on Reapers, which is the last thing you want to use roaches on, honestly. Like. They're just being used for fireworks sake. Oh, oh managed to catch a Reaper. Barely managed to catch it. Just as he dies. Shame for him. And the Wolverine is up, up, though. Let's see how well right it's used. Poor GG. It's, always it's not. Probably no. won't be. Or maybe fire. Look at it. this. Look at this. Well, it almost worked. Got rid of Killed one Weaver. No. Threw it out. Killed it. Impulse at work. Okay, so we're 1 1. That counter pick worked. Skazi and Black Duchy have apparently better fundamentals. It might just be the better factory choice there. I think yeah, if you have true. confidence in your ability to keep daggers alive, um, but Kodachi is one of the worst things um, to fight with daggers because it, it, it's just it has the same high alpha. So if you go in, you get hit in the face. It has AOE and it's higher health. Yeah, it has high health. It also has regeneration, so it can sort of whittle your forces down and retreat from them and make uh, it very difficult to build up a dagger ball. If you can't do that, it's very hard to play hovercraft in the early game. Yeah. Which I, th I think I think um, I think that's what really gave the tank player so much an advantage and met, allowed him to snowball those panthers. Yeah, because I mean, what can you really do when you, all you have is not particularly mobile units? He could have pulled back if he had managed to build a big scalpel mace force, contest fifty percent of the map. Leave them there and build up a, into build up a large enough force to really start taking out the Panthers. But he he was just losing his hovercraft piecemeal. Mm-hmm.